Hi everyone, welcome back to Dr. Hans Classroom. Now there are a lot of developments on COVID, the variant, the vaccine this week. So I made uh, two separate videos uh, this week and this one particularly is focused on the Omicron variant and I try to answer a few uh, common questions. So I try to differentiate the two different videos with different background color. This one is uh, pinkish red, the other one is blue and I also have a different stuffed animal next here with me. Okay, so to tell the difference. So um, now, without further ado, let's get started and have a update on the Omicron variant. The first question, can Omicron escape vaccine immunity? Now, Dr. Alex Ziggo in South Africa has released the first lab study on Omicron a few days ago. His research group mixed a live virus with blood samples from six people who have two doses of the Pfizer vaccine and six people who have the two-dose series and previous infection. Now, South Africa has not authorized the booster dose yet, but a two-dose plus previous should yield a very high level of antibodies based on other studies we have covered in the past. In this study, they try to find out how Omicron enters human cells and how many antibodies respond to Omicron compared to the original SARS-CoV-2 virus. The idea is that the more neutralizing antibodies can bind to the virus, the quicker it gets neutralized and lower the risk of symptomatic infections. Now, first, the Omicron still enters human cells the same way as before, which is through the ACE2 receptors. But the Omicron causes approximately 41-fold reduction in the neutralizing antibodies binding. Now, to compare to Delta, it had a 5-fold reduction and Beta had an 8-fold deduction. Now, we also see a reduction among people with two-dose series plus previous infection, the green dots, but it's still higher than those with two doses. The author estimated that a 41-fold reduction translates to a vaccine efficacy of 22.5% against symptomatic infection. What they mean is that a two-dose series is no longer effective against Omicron symptomatic infections, but the antibody data still supports the two-dose series would be sufficient to protect against severe disease. Pfizer very quickly released a similar report and said booster dose might greatly reduce Omicron escape. Now, I'll talk about more on this topic in my booster update video. But the paper from Dr. Siegel's lab has an unclear conclusion. To quote their words, a reasonable conclusion from this data may be that vaccination may offer a very limited protection against Omicron infection. Now, it is not certain if the word vaccination here refers to the primary two-dose series or the third dose because of neutralizing antibody waning in the first month post-vaccination as they referenced in their paper. Now, the final answer is that Omicron can escape vaccine immunity against infection but not completely escaping yet. So the second question, does Omicron increase transmissibility? Here we can see COVID cases in South Africa has increased exponentially in the past seven days. In the epicenter of Gauteng, now the black line here on the graph, is the Omicron wave and you can clearly see it rising much sharply than the previous beta and delta wave. Now, the RT value measures the effective reproduction number. It is now holding at about 2 to 3, which means one Omicron case can pass to 2 to 3 people. Now, this graph shows us the current RT is higher than in any other previous period. In the UK, Professor Grant at the University of East Anglia tweeted several posts of the R value in England. Now, currently, London has the highest R value of 1.32 and is at about 1.01 across England. Now, London also reported the most number of probable Omicron cases at this point. Overall, the UK is seeing the highest number of COVID infections since January of this year. Now, the answer for now is that Omicron variant is highly transmissible, but we still don't have a final answer on how high it is yet. Does Omicron increase severity, meaning hospitalization or death? 
Preliminary data from South Africa does record a lowered number of Omicron cases that require acute or intensive care than previous waves. Again, we still see older population has a higher rate of needing intensive care than the younger people. In Gauteng, even though cases are rising sharply, the rate of hospital admission and death are not going up as quickly yet. But I want to emphasize that hospitalization and death usually have a two-week delay in the trend, so we are still not seeing the full picture at this point. The slightly encouraging news is that even though the fully vaccinated rate in South Africa is at about 26%, Combining natural immunity or previous infections or both seem to keep severe cases low at this point. Now we hope this would still be the case in the next two weeks or so. To wrap up this topic, most of the 43 Omicron cases reported in the U.S. have been found in fully vaccinated people. Up until December. 10th, 34 of the 43 cases are fully vaccinated, 14 of the cases have also received the third dose, but 5 of the 14 had only received the third dose less than 14 days before the Omicron encounters. So it may suggest that the booster effect had not been fully kicked in for those 5 people. Now, most of them had only mild symptoms. One person was hospitalized for two days, and these symptoms appear to be just coughing, congestion, fatigue, and they are quite different than the symptoms caused by previous variants. 25 of the 43 um, people were between 18 to 39 years old, so they were younger, and six of them had COVID infection previously, so that may also contribute to milder symptoms. Now, again, it is very important to Note that even this title of the news said most of the Omicron cases are fully vaccinated. It does not mean vaccinated people are easier to get infected with the Omicron variant. It may due to behavioral differences and the eagerness to get COVID testing when symptoms were only mild. So please note that. The bottom line is the Omicron variant is transmitting very fast. But because people have either some form of immunity from the primary series of vaccination or from prior infections, the cases so far has been quite mild, which is good news and I hope it stays like that in the future. That is all for this Omicron Grand Update and don't forget I have another video this week on Booster Vaccine Research Update. Now please feel free to check that out and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.